Liverpool are very interested in Barella and it comes from a very, very credible source as well. And I want this to happen. This video is being brought to you with thanks to Surfshark. Surfshark is an app or browser extension that allows you to browse websites in other countries and keep you safe and secure from hackers. Surfshark allows you to virtually travel the world with just the tap of a finger. As an example, we here in Ireland can afflix, uh, afflix, afflix, what is afflix? We here in Ireland can watch other countries' Netflix libraries, unlock UK services such as BBC iPlayer, and of course, that all important Spanish The Zone account for football. Surfshark keeps you safe and secure by covering up everything that you do online. When your device connects to the internet, all this information is, in a way, blurred out. This is particularly effective when you're out and about on public Wi-Fi, maybe you're in college or at a cafe. It keeps your information safe and secure from hackers. With a surf, with a surf shark, just ask surf shark. Just here, have a surf shark, Johnny. Mildred Surfshark. Surfshark allow you to use unlimited devices on just one subscription, meaning if you so wish, you can grant access to your friends and family. On top of that, Surfshark offer a 30 day money back guarantee. If you don't like it, they refund you. It is that simple. Simply scan the QR code on your screen right now, or use the link in the description, putting in the code Anfield Agenda at checkout. Apparently, Chelsea have cooled their interest in Alexis McAllister. A report from Football London say that he is uh, now almost certainly favoured to come to Liverpool Football Club. There's still a fee to be agreed, obviously, between Liverpool and Brighton. It was reported yesterday that a fee of about a hundred, or excuse me, a wage of about a hundred and fifty thousand pound a week is uh, what's been pitched to Alexis McAllister's side, which I think has been well received uh, obviously there's this talk about the david ornstein clause it's not called the david ornstein clause that'd be rather weird wouldn't it if his contract included the david ornstein clause but david ornstein of the athletic did break the news that a clause does exist in alexis McAllister's contract but not a clause as we know it not a clause like it's life jim but not as we know it come on we're all thinking that right um there's a clause that allows brighton to have a say in the situation but also gives a possible way for Alexis McAllister to move on, but there's not like a number. There's no number in there where you can say like, pay this and he goes. So we'll have to wait and see. But I do get the feeling from what I'm reading that there's goodwill there and that maybe, you know, we're going to see Alexis McAllister as the first new midfielder through the doors in the summer. So do keep an eye out for that one. But the big news of the evening came after I filmed last night's YouTube video. And that comes from Italy, where apparently there's been a report that Liverpool are very interested in Barella. And it comes from a very, very credible source as well. De Marzio is well known for his transfer talk and he has been saying that Liverpool are sending scouts over again to watch Barella, that they're interested in Barella, and I want this to happen. I want this to be the case. I would love Liverpool to go into next season having signed Barella, uh, McAllister, and Ugarte. Now, we've already called them Barellister, by the way, for that combo. We're working on that. We need you to get behind it. Barellister, get that going. But yeah, Liverpool apparently interested in Barella, and I like the idea of this makeup of those midfield three. Don't... Take this as Liverpool signing those three, by the way. This is just one man's opinion. But Ugarte at 22, McAllister at 24, and Barella at 27. I think that would be brilliant. That would be a brilliant refresh of the midfield. You've got the experience of a player right in his prime there with Barella. Add that to, obviously, the experience of Thiago and Jordan Henderson with the youthful exuberance of Alexis McAllister at 24. Hopefully, Ugarte at 22. Curtis Jones, Stefan Bajcetic, Harvey Elliott, I think you're getting the makings there. With Fabinho, of course, as well, unless Liverpool move him on. I like it. And that's my preferred three. I don't know if that's the three. I don't even know if it will be three. But if you said to me, Craig, give me three midfielders for Liverpool to do business for in the summer, Alexis McAllister, Ugarte. And I'd prefer Barella over Gravenberch. That's my own preference. I've also seen Gravenberch strongly linked to Manchester City. Uh, which always worries me because, you know, we can compete financially with um, Abu Dhabi FC. So wait and see what happens on that one. But yeah, that is where I'm at right now with regards to Liverpool's midfield links. Uh, the, the talk about Liverpool signing that young centre-back from PSG is one that I can't see how it will work. You know, is a 17-year-old ready to come in now to the Premier League and be third or fourth choice behind Canade and Van Dijk? I don't know. I don't know is the honest answer. I mean, 
you've got to take into account Sepp van den Berg's situation as well. He said he'd be happy if, you know, he had more time at Schalke. He seems to be enjoying his football over there. Uh, Cuevin Kelleher, the big update in Cuevin Kelleher is that £20 million seems to be the number that Liverpool are looking for for Cuevin Kelleher if he moves on in the summer, which it looks like he probably will. Three clubs that have been mentioned and linked with Cuevin Kelleher are Brighton, uh, Brentford and Spurs. Now, I've mentioned this before, there could be a bit of a goalkeeper merry-go-round there. Do we see Raya going from Brentford to Spurs and then Kelleher going into Brentford? Or do we see maybe Spurs coming straight in for Cuevie and Kelleher? I think £20 million is a fair price for a young keeper, but an experienced backup goalkeeper. Then the question is, who on earth do Liverpool bring in? I believe there is some talk about Klopp looking for, looking at a German, a 34-year-old, I think. Somebody mentioned from the Bundesliga. Can't remember off the top of my head where he plies his trade, but I'm all right with an experienced shot stopper coming in. Handanovic would be an option that I'd like Liverpool to look at. Obviously, then with a view to the likes of Pitaluga um, and, and other younger keepers maybe coming through in the future. So that is where we're at, I think, with the latest updates surrounding Liverpool's targets. There's not been much talk that I've seen in the media, and again, I would ask you guys to let me know your thoughts on this, about outgoings from Liverpool Football Club. Yes, we know Firmino's moving on. We know Milner's moving on. We know Cade is limping on. And we know Oxley chamberlains moving on, but we haven't seen any talk of sales outside of maybe Na Phillips. Um, I guess the big one we all have a question in our minds about is Fabinho. Is there a number? Is there is there an argument to Liverpool selling Fabinho if, if an offer came in? I would suggest yes. If you can bring in another DM or something like Ugarte, like we mentioned earlier on, and you have by Chechich there as well. Henderson can, of course, come into play in the six if needs be. We've got Trent now, who can just do everything because he's Trent. Uh, so, yeah, it's interesting to see what outgoings we may see leave Liverpool Football Club. Will there be a surprise? Will there be somebody we haven't spoken about? If you're looking at moving on Phillips and Kelleher, uh, Matip maybe, of course, from a centre-back perspective, you could probably free up... 35 maybe a little bit higher than that million quid but I guess the question is will Liverpool move on somebody that we haven't spoken about and that I'm interested to see or is it just going to be a case of moving on those players whose contracts are up and then looking to refresh from there and maybe build one thing we can't forget about is there is a lot of wages being removed from Liverpool's books this summer Milner's on a pretty decent wage Bobby I think's on about 180 a week uh, Oxlade Chamberlain if I remember correctly about 140 Kada, I don't know, but whatever it is, it's way too much for what he's actually given us. So I would rank them 800 grand, a million quid a week, maybe freed up in wages this summer. So let's see what happens there. But again, I want to know your thoughts on this. Let me know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Is there names that you haven't seen mentioned that you'd like to? I'm going to throw a name out there that I did in the live stream earlier on. Now, don't hate me, right? Because I know it's a bit off the wall, but we love a relegation signing, right? There's been talk of Liverpool looking for a fullback. I don't know if we need a fullback right now for the here and now because, or I mean for the future, because we've got Bradley, we've got Calvin Ramsey. So I'm going to just throw the name, um, the, the dude from Leicester. I can't even his name's called Castagna. Yes, I'm going to go throw Castagna out there as somebody who, if Leicester get relegated, you could get experience there for, I would imagine, a reasonable fee. And maybe fill a gap. Could probably cover both fullback positions. I know he's naturally right-sided. So, yeah. What says you? Am I mad? Is it the most ludicrous thing you've ever heard? No, says Heavy Metal D with regards to Castagna. Look, I get it. It's not the most sexy name in the world. And you know what? Full disclosure. It's not my suggestion. I read it somewhere. And then I sat back and thought about it. And then I did what any responsible adult does, which is go straight onto the FPL and check his FPL numbers. But yeah, for me, I think it's not the most ludicrous idea. If we get older players in, it's telling the younger ones we don't really trust them. No, I think it's more that Bradley and Ramsey still need more time to develop. That's how I would view it. You know, Connor Bradley... Uh, look, I'm a biased because he's, he's from the island of Ireland and I, I love the lad. I think he's really good. And I think he's got a big future. But I feel like we've got another Nico Williams situation there where, you know, there might be no doubts he's good enough to play in the Premier League. But will he get the time at Liverpool? Don't know. Uh, I want Calvin Ramsey to, you know, be given an opportunity. He's had a very difficult first season with stop start with injuries. So hopefully he can come in a pre-season and show the manager what he's about a little bit more. 
Every time I see Bradley play a Windsor, he's in the best team, could be in Northern Ireland associate. Yeah, he's standout, isn't he, already playing for Northern Ireland? Like, he just brings so much energy. He's He's got a great engine. He really does. How much do you expect Liverpool to spend in the summer? Net spend or just to spend? We're going to go 120 net, maybe a little higher. But I have a feeling I won't be a million miles off at 120, 130, maybe. I'd want it to be significantly higher. I feel like 150, 160 is fairer. But, you know, we don't know where the money's coming from. And that's the thing. Like, we still have no information on any potential investment or a minority stake being sold. If I was to say to you, who do you think Liverpool will go for for centre back in the summer? What are you saying? Are we going a Nacio? Are we going maybe a curveball like the PSG defender we spoke about? Are we look? I, I've heard nothing recently on the kid from Benfica Silva. I think Guardiola we'd all love, but a price tag seems um, restrictive to us. <laughs> Harry Maguire. Imagine Andy. Can you imagine? Honestly, I, I I don't know. I think I'd never watch football again, Andy. Honestly. Uh, Indica is the shouts from a few people. Um, Timber obviously is uh Timber's an interesting one. I I'll be honest with you, and, and I've said this to you before. I haven't watched much of Urian Timber, so I don't. I'm not really a fair person to ask an opinion on whether he's good enough or not. Pear Shores is he the guy who's at Torino? Is that him? I have seen his name mentioned. Now, if I remember correctly, we were linked with Pear Shores last year. Um, and I have seen him linked again recently. He's at Torino. Yeah, that is him. Yeah, that's definitely a name that has been mentioned. I don't know if it's mentioned because it's lazy journalism and mentioned from previously, but we were definitely linked to him before. The guy he mentioned earlier from PSG, who was 17. Um, yeah, he's... Um, I don't know how I'd feel about that. I, not because he's... Again, not because of the PSG stuff, but 17 just... I mean, it's a big change, right? If you're going from the experience of a Joel Matip to somebody 15 years his junior. Hmm. I, f I don't know how I feel about that. 